O town of Hopkinton, your small town charm welcomes everyone from near and afar. You are filled with community activities and civic pride. You inhabit scientists, teachers, poets, musicians, and celebrity stars. How I love to call you home, sincere and bona fide. O town of Hopkinton, you leave an enormous footprint towards the future. With new businesses, community projects, the famous Boston Marathon, and friendly citizens, you fulfill the hopes and American dreams of many, leaving behind a trail of workers. Here's to a bright future full of accomplishments and a grand vision. O town of Hopkinton, let's celebrate the changes, opportunities, and memories you brought. With three centuries filled with history and community spirit, and still continuing to embrace the present and enlightening our future thoughts, how I love your sweet-smelling aroma and community unity you bring. Let's take time to reflect on your honor of merit. Thank you. Please give me just a moment of your time To rest a little quiet in your mind My wheels have got to stop a little while Slow the world and cool down I've got a strong and restless need to feel fine In arms that cling and eyes that know and shine Even though I'll never understand the signs That brought me to this town Lady, are you all that life would seem? In these quiet hours while I lie and scheme To pull you through the windows of my dreams Between these stars and trees Am I on the outside or am I in? The arms that prove the lonely lie to sin a prophet or a soul in wandering with a promise to begin please tell me will you cry because this ends or hold me till the river bends or simply smile because it happened Can I have another drink of wine To drown me in another time Or wake me to this heart of mine Or tell you what I find beautiful Lady, are you all that life would see In these quiet hours while I lie and scheme To pull me to the windows of my dreams Between these stars and trees Will you cry because this ends Or hold me till the river bends or simply smile because it happened or simply smile because it happened thank you very much I have measured my words, measured them all, made a thousand visions and revisions, and worn new metaphors old. 
So how could I begin to open what I sent? All the works and days of my hands and all my hopes promptly returned in a self-addressed stamped envelope. Was it worth it after all, after searching the depths of silent seas for an idea or an image that would please someone, anyone, save you and me, after clawing the barren ocean floor? I should have been a pair of ragged claws that cannot hold a pen. Was it then worth it after all, after the lived for letter I just now read? The forum letter that in essence said that wasn't what we meant at all. That wasn't it at all. Now as I sit here scratching my head, we may yet be famous when we're dead. Ever the fool, I pick up my pen and continue writing with a sigh. Poems that no one may ever read. No one that is except you and I. <laughs>《The Wrenching, then Refusal to Let Go, and then The Doing and the Consequence. The pattern reoccurs. How will I know it when I see it? Often it presents the closing doors, blinds drawn, the corner turned. But sometimes in this dreariest of rooms, the palest glimmer Hope I thought I'd burned, like marsh light that in rotted tree trunks blooms, floats in my eye, and I feel vaguely how the heart repairs its breaking, circumvents the force arrayed against it, here and now not quite acknowledging, consents. The pattern has its way. There is a change uncoupled from the last but just as strange. Let us make music together, lift our hearts with song. Let us reach out to each other. Cause everyone belongs, ah, uh, yeah, everyone belongs, mm -hmm, yeah, everyone belongs. We're all the fabric of our small world, doing the best we can. Let's forgive ourselves and each other. We're just one family of woman and man. So let us make music together, lift our hearts with song, let us reach out to each other. Everyone, everyone belongs, ah, uh, yeah, everyone belongs, mm, yeah, everyone belongs. We go on the right road, fall off that road, then go on the right road again. And in the middle of these human imperfections, we need to be each other's friends. Reach out now and let us make music together. Lift our hearts with song. Let us reach out to each other. Cause everyone belongs, ah uh, yeah, everyone belongs, mm -hmm, yeah, everyone belongs. We might feel shy, might feel bad, feel like we done wrong. But I'm here to say, let's get over it and sing one loving song to each other and let us make music together lift our hearts with song let us reach out to each other Cause everyone belongs, ah uh, yeah, everyone
everyone belongs. Mm-hmm, yeah, everyone belongs. Ah, uh-huh, yeah, everyone belongs. Mm-hmm, yeah, everyone belongs. Ah, uh-huh, yeah, everyone belongs. Mm-hmm, yeah, everyone. Every one of us belongs. Uh huh. Give us your tired, your hungry, your poor, those willing to earn their citizenship. Give us America's tired, hungry, and poor, those that cannot fend for themselves, for all to be educated and self-reliant. To be under one, many, or no God, part of the Pledge of Allegiance, and not its shadow. In the land of the free and the home of the brave, how could we ever let any man be slave? How could the icon of American liberty have been a woman who could not vote? Standing before the ark of American liberty, feel the footsteps of your ancestral people taking their first step in freedom. Shed tears of joy for everyone taking their first step, overshadowed by clarity of heartache for little boys and little girls mothers and fathers who took their first step without the hand of the other. It's not our culture that brings us here. It's having culture. It's not any one's culture. It's everyone's culture. When government fails to meet that obligation, it is the responsibility of the people to alter, change, institute, new, organize in a manner to better serve our safety and happiness. Freedom is hard. Equality is harder. Morality is unrelenting. Give us all tired, hungry, and poor whose vocabulary is void of the word convenient. All tired, hungry, and poor so they may be all tired, hungry, and poor, so they may be inspired, and they will no longer suffer. Under the pains and penalties of morality, may these words forever serve Lady Liberty and all of mankind. Thank you. Today I'll walk and enjoy the sun, but I think I'll wait until I am done. First I'll make soup. Oops, I better pay those bills. Oh yes, and then the thank you notes. And dishes up the gills. I haven't stretched or lifted weights, but now I'm going to meditate. Then I bundled up and walked with care. It snowed last night. Ice was everywhere. Twas cloudy and gray and getting late. There wasn't a minute to hesitate. There it was as I round the bend, shining so brightly, saying, here I am again. I walked with glee in the glare of the sun, so joyful and happy. The sun wasn't done. Thank you. Radio is playing Don't hear what they're saying Eyes on the highway High beams mark the lane Windshield wipers keeping time Other times on my mind Thinking back to different days Of cold November rain Summer thunder drives you from the garden Winter snowstorms drive you 
insane Coolest of all Evenings in the fall Driving in the cold November rain Line of mourners leaves the room A line of headlights breaks the gloom Black umbrellas shelter From a sky that weeps with pain Words of hope and solace Words to comfort and remind us The sun will drive away The cold November rain Summer thunder drives you from the garden Wind and snowstorms drive you insane Cruelest of all our evenings in the fall Driving in that cold November rain Somewhere down the road, I'm told, there's a shelter from the cold. Somewhere an exit from the pain. When I find that open door, there'll be someone waiting for me. I'll leave behind the cold November rain. Summer thunder drives you from the garden Winter snowstorms drive you insane Cruelest of all our evenings in the fall Driving in the cold November rain Driving in that cold November rain Thank you. There's an ocean that lives inside of me By breathless fathoms, waves wild And sparse shallow dunes, clear as dawn there's a calling back into the, into the waters by a cleansing, freeing, weightless ways. There's a glacier that lives inside of me, cold, unyielding, ancient and raw, the path maker, traveler, renewer. There's a calling back for basic need as ways wandered, new valleys to seed. There's a sky that lives inside of me sparse and wide, spectrums and shade, thunder, clouds, rain and blue, fiercely so as the breath of a newborn. There's a mountain that lives inside of me, her majesty's grace towering high, snowfields rock and pastures grazed. There's a calling back upon the range, the raising of self, horizons gained. There's a valley that lives inside of me, calm, sweet grass and meadow, the home of solace and grace, I suppose. There's a calling back into this peace where a heart torn by life shall heal. There's a galaxy that lives inside of me, sparse and wide and yet minute, a single cell perhaps, the womb of God. There's a calling I hear, a sense, a knowing, but I don't know why. Still, I shall be, I. There's a child that lives inside of me, a grand subject of innocence and life, a master, 
a seer, a wanderer, a freer. There's a calling, an eternal calling, and I am learning now to listen. Thank you. So we were driving in my car, Eve and I, and Eve looks out the window, and neither one of us is minding the silence that exists between us like a gentle sea, with the two of us set on separate little boats, floating, knowing that each other is nearby. Just this morning, I noticed Eve enter the room and sink deep down into the closest chair, and she called it a simple arrhythmia, but Eve needed a few moments to revive and synchronize her heart's pumping and her labored breathing. And when Eve recovered, she charged forward to read her poetry to an audience whose heart and breath were all quite regular, perhaps not having the same kind of mourning, the same kind of living of life. And she got to them with all her words like a hungry, gentle fist, picking each up by the scruff of their neck, gently shaking them until they were breathing just as hard. After the reading, I am driving my 83-year-old friend Eve back to her car. And so we share this ride and talk about the obligatory for a bit work, families, destinations ahead, and then we head for the deeper matters, places we both have always dared to go. How it feels to be me not knowing what I should be doing with my life at this time, the children growing, moving onward, considering ways I have changed. I tell her of how hard it is to raise daughters I love so much and think about setting them loose into the world, which I have grown to both fear and love. She tells me how her daughter that she cared for so many years is now going with her to the doctor appointments, calling her to see how she is doing every day. Is she taking all her medication? And how that's sometimes all too hard to fathom. I tell her I feel my body is shifting like the earth's plates and that my womb is telling me it's time to say goodbye and how it is so mildly shocking like a little earthquake. She listens and nods and says she remembers how it is and looks out the window and quietly murmurs that she remembers like she remembers her first day of becoming a woman, like she remembers her first day of school and how it all passes by so fast and huge in the blink of an eye. And she mentions that being 83, she sometimes wonders what it'll be like when she's gone. For those she loves, will they keep her close in her mind, in their mind? Will they be all right? Who will look after them the same way she does? What will it be like to struggle to breathe, to feel your organs shutting down one by one, quietly turning out the lights and performing those last few movements like a slow dance without a partner? and whisper the little delusions of your mind before the switches all go black and out. What will it be like to finally close your eyes and say goodnight? And we both don't know what to say then and at that point, so I look ahead while I drive and Eve looks out the window. It's a silence that is suitable. And we both feel the depth of our exchange and we embrace the silence about us, the sea that has us floating in our separate little boats but throwing anchors out to each other. <coughs> And suddenly Eve inhales, like this, <gasps> such a high-pitched shriek, I'm sure her heart or her last breath being released that she might have known it was coming. And so I pull the car over to look at her, although I don't want to face what truth might exist. But as I do, I turn to see her, and Eve is just sitting there, and she's smiling, so at peace, looking out the window, breathing just fine, while she points and exclaims. Would you look at those gorgeous blossoms on that magnolia tree? <laughs> and I sigh a breath of relief and compose myself and turn my neck to look at her out Ruth's window, Eve's window for a moment or so, and she's right. It's breathtakingly gorgeous. So we both are looking and celebrating with our common stare of wonder, looking at this tree like a brilliant pink and red sunset of, on the sea in this moment. We can feel the calm promise of life's beauty, of how in this life it's all meant to be unpredictable, mysterious, painful, beautiful. And we sit for a few more moments in admiration of this sight in synchronized bre mindful breathing, aware of our separate lives as the storms pass by, as the sun sets pink, realizing we are in our different boats yet there for each other while we row forward towards what is waiting and not knowing. But as we row in separate boats, we are still side by side.
Starlight dimmed, moonlight brightest and fullest. Skeleton key awoke, unlocked, danced with remembrances dead. Moonlight waned darkest, deepest. Starlight glowed, remembrances dead, revels ended. Skeleton key slept, locked door again. Skeleton key found, memories passed, then locked up, skeleton key lost. Thank you. At the Robert Burns birthday dinner, I learned to drink scotch the way some Scots do. A drizzle of scotch and a drip of water. Sipped slowly and held sensually over cordial conversation. And so today, I poured myself a drizzle and a drip. Sniffed and sipped, watching the downy woodpecker feed on suet in the apple tree, while I pecked at roasted cabbage, carrots, and parsnip on a bed of lentils, sitting in my snowbound sunroom, surrounded by drifts, marooned at home in my own cordial company. Drizzle, drip, lunch in the sun, the blizzard of 2015.